We're here at DayArc Environmental Systems using California Lightworks LED lighting. Let's find out how do they cut energy usage by up to 70%, get 8% financing even for cannabis operations. How do they gather data and control a grow room environment to such a high degree? This is the most revolutionary indoor grow system I have ever seen. Welcome to our R&D and manufacturing facility. We've partnered with California Lightworks. This is our debut. We are officially open for business. Always struggled with what to do with the heat and humidity in the room like all growers. The system that we've developed here, we've pioneered this space, is we are utilizing a geothermal loop to cool all of our water-cooled components, including a custom fixture that California Lightworks um, manufactures for us. And we place a heat exchanger cooled by our geothermal loop, and we're able to remove 90% of the heat from that light fixture and put it right into the ground. So we're actually renew using renewable energy to cool our room and do that at levels of efficiency that have never been seen before. Versus a standard HID system, we are 70% more efficient. We will knock 70% off your utility bill versus a standard LED system. We're 50% more efficient. And something that we're very proud of that we were able to offer to the industry is financing for the complete installed cost of all of our components. And that includes lighting, HVAC, dehumidification, fertigation, and the DDC control system. Everything installed, we can finance that at great rates in the market. So the whole system, because it is cooled by the geothermal loop, is available for investment tax credits. Due to the Inflation Reduction Act that was signed into law in 2022, those investment tax credits pave the way for the financing, so you get a deduction on the cost of the equipment and then we're able to finance the rest. So you're getting uh, federal tax credits. Are there also rebate incentives potentially from the utilities? There are. It's a utility by utility basis and different states have different criteria. Um, some states have a, a dollar or 25 cent per KWH saved. That would apply independently of, of the, the rebates we're talking about, of the investment tax credits. Very interesting. These, inv these investment tax credits are federal Everything else is still available for any state or any utility rebate that's available. And this facility, you drilled four 400 foot wells of- Eight inch diameter. Eight inch diameter. Mm -hmm. uh, everything starts there. So yep. obviously you have to have room to do that on your property. Right. And with that, you are cooling the lights, HVAC, dehumidification, and your- fertigation and yep. watering system. At what temperature, uh, more or less? So we have an entering water temperature that stays pretty consistent between 58 and 65 degrees. The water from this system that's going underground mm -hmm. comes up here via a pump. These pumps. So one pump will operate the system. This whole system is being powered by 285 watts. Right. So that's so three light bulbs. We can do the entire cooling with this single water-cooled unit. It's called a VRF unit, uh, variable refrigerant flow. Variable refrigerant flow units are highly efficient anyway. When you combine that with, with geothermal cooling, this is one of the most efficient HVAC systems in the world. With consistent 65 degree uh, water coming in, this will be the same unit in the dead of summer as it is in the dead of winter. All right, um, and again, that efficiency it's on the order, time, order of magnitude of 10 times more efficient than any other system, and it's a fraction of the size. So we use the geothermal loop to lower the temperature of the batch tanks and supply a constant 67 degree nutrient mix to the plants. But most importantly, at 67 degrees, you have a much higher dissolved oxygen content. So all your nano bubblers, all your oxygenators that you use, you're able to keep a much higher oxygen content at that lower temperature. When your nutrient mix sit in your pipe and get up to 85 degrees before it gets delivered, um, your, all your water goes stagnant. So it doesn't take much energy because we, you know, water temperatures in an insulated tank will stay pretty consistent. The problem is once they leave the tank and they sit in those lines, right? right. So we have a return loop that before the fertigation goes to the plants, we bring it back, chill it down, oxygenate it, and send out a constant 67 degrees to our plants. And at 67 degrees, 
you're able to have a much higher dissolved oxygen concentration, but you're also able to prohibit mold and other pathogens, um, root aphids, which terrible, terrible pests coming in. They don't like to propagate when the temperature's low. Very nice. And you're even able to cool the root zone, correct? We are. Um, additional option, we run radiant cooling through a piece of PEX tubing in your, your rolling tables and then set your pot or whatever substrate you're using, uh, rock wool slab, individual pots right on top of that, that radiant cooled PEX and we control your root zone temperature now from the bottom and then from the top when we deliver the nutrients in and it keeps that entire root zone at the optimum temperature. And the plants give off a lot of humidity. So, so we actually decouple the HVAC system and the dehumidification system and the Quest units operate highly efficiently because we're cooling the discharge with a cooling loop. And we have three Quest dehumidifiers. This is a, a Quest 335 dehumidifier with a cooling coil attached to the geothermal loop. We include this in our, in our scope of offering. We're able to get investment tax credits, financing on the Quest units. The installed cost. We like the Quest 335. It has a high static fan and also a variable speed drive. We run this from the geothermal loop. We add here in our facility, we don't modify the unit at all, except for adding a discharge cooling coil. We have 65 degree water coming in uh, at the bottom of the coil, going through, pick up about seven degrees across that coil. Discharge on this unit is about 72 degrees. Which normally would be 110. 110, so massive heat, massive reduction, heat reduction on the dehumidifiers. The dehumidifiers actually produce a net cooling effect to your room. So when the dehumidifier is running, lowering the, the, the humidity set point, at the same time, you're getting a cooling effect. So all the airflow that you see in this room that every grow room has falls across this heat exchanger. Offering additional cooling. Additional cooling. We're actually, we're, we're in this room right now with all the lights on, full blast, three dehumidifiers running, and it's 76 degrees. And the HVAC is not even running. No HVAC. And the, the HVAC will kick on. When the plants are producing um, about week four, when you really start that a bit large canopy and that high humidity dump that the, the plants will discharge into the room, that's when the HVAC unit picks up because then the dehumidifiers will be putting out more heat and the discharge will creep up to about 82, 83 degrees, right? And that's then the HVAC, just HVAC takes in. that out. So this whole room will operate on three tons of HVAC. This is really the heart of the control system. Mm -hmm. So this is a custom designed control system that you have uh, developed over the last eight years. Over the last eight years. We're actually developing a very high tech front end that's gonna have a very elegant user interface that's under development right now. But we take every component that we supply from the HVAC, the dehumidification, even the lighting system, we bring onto this system so you have everything in the central spot. The lighting system is quite unique also. You mentioned you're using light movers and I'm sure most growers are familiar with the benefits. We've developed a commercial light mover that's very unique. It reduces the number of fixtures by about 25%. Um, it is industrial grade. This thing moves back and forth uh, using hydraulics. So it's, it's maintenance free, practically long life, and we can push with our setup, the same one you'll see in this room, we can do up to a 200 foot row. You get uh, much better penetration of the canopy. It's more like the natural sunlight. Yep. And you can also raise and lower them based on that exact intensity level you're looking for. Right, so if, if a grower wants a particular daily light integral, a particular DLI, we can match that nearly to the point because again, not, not only the lateral movement, but really the everybody knows, especially LED manufacturers, that the highest quality light is about 18 to 24 inches from that fixture. Basically we have California Lightworks LEDs. Yep on light movers, yep. move back and forth, up and down, all dynamic. Our standard design, we do a four foot spacing and then we move the lights four foot. So we get complete coverage over the canopy, um, less shadowing, we're able to move the lights down closer to take advantage of that high quality light. 
24 inches from the spectrum and really dial in a precise daily light interval. You see the pipe rotation actually spins within our custom design wheels. We don't need bearings to handle the rotation. And that's all very smooth movement back and forth and, and it, it really allows you on a industrial level to be able to control the height, of, the height and right. now the DLI of the light. So the beauty of course of the Mega Drive design is there's no driver. Right. The driver is centralized, it's outside of the room. You're taking the heat of the driver out, plus makes this much easier to cool. There's no peripheral equipment. If we look here, here's a competitor's LED. There again, with the driver running, running much hotter. You've got to deal with the driver over the, over the light fixture. We're at 100 degrees. 100 degrees or more. We've got, to, we've got to contend with the space of the driver. Uh, obviously, this is a much cleaner design for this application. We actually draw the heat from this section of the light into the heat exchanger. So when you're looking at the inlet is on this side, the water is exiting at 73 degrees, and it's coming into the light at 69. So we're picking up about seven degrees across this light. And all that water, all that heat is going out into the geothermal loop. What's the time frame from the time point that you start discussing with somebody mm -hmm. and they eventually come on board? So literally, as soon as those rooms come in, um, most of our components, we can get a uh, lead time of eight weeks or less. I mean, your remote drivers are great because they can bring in all the 480 drops right to the drivers and we set them in and to wire up the lights just takes literally a few minutes to daisy chain the lights because all the power wirings already were there and ready for us. We want to make it as easy for the growers as possible to concentrate on what they do. And at DayArc, we never try to tell a grower how to grow, best methodology. All we want to guarantee them is that they have the most precisely controlled environment that they've ever experienced go off and do your thing as best you can Along do with the lowest <laughs> energy Along usage. with the lowest, lowest energy usage, which for any grow, your electrical rates are usually your number one expense. So like all of our Mega Drive installations, you can adjust the spectrum. It has automated sunrise, sunset. You can program it over time. So we're using that here. The precision environment, I mean, the proof will be in the pudding once we have this installed and have some growers that, that are early adopters that really want to wrap their arms around this technology and maximize it. Obviously the heart of our lighting system is our remote power supply Mega Drive, which for this application is perfect. We, we get the heat and the wiring and whatever out of the room. There's no power drops for the lights. We supply all the cables. Uh, you have a output reading digitally so you can all, all see how your power supply is performing. And, and there again, just as any of our Mega Drive lighting systems, we do the overall light plan, we provide the cabling. Yep. Even though this is a bit of a custom installation, we can adapt this to any type of grow room, any, any scale, uh, among the most reliable and most efficient drivers. Well, you can, you can tell, I mean, we've got 16 lights operating here and it's not even, it's barely elevated temperature blowing off. So, very so it just adds to the overall efficiency. 100%. And modular, once again, everything here is modular, can be relocated, uh, expanded, contracted fairly easily. We can run, in most of our designs, one driver per row, right? Yeah. So our typical room layout will have four rows. So four drivers with the, your mega flip option, that powers two, two rooms. rooms at the, so for the power of we, one. we try to use all your innovation that you develop for your lights in the day art design. Great. Well, like I say, uh, this is the most incredible grow room design I've ever seen. Congratulations. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll be talking much more soon.